Yeah, it's your boy Chili here. Welcome back to C++ Multithreading. In the last video, we got our little tasky wasky all coded up. And now we want to use it with a thread pool. Only it's not liking it because, you know, we're, pa we're passing in here a lambda, but it expects to get a task. And those things are compatible. Now, I don't want my thread pool, I don't have to be able to create a task externally and pass it in. I would like the ability just to pass a normal function to my thread pool and the thread pool will run that normal function. So, we need to change this and this run function will hide the details of having to create a task and so on and so forth. So if we have to pass in a function in here, we're, it's gonna have to be templated because functions come in various flavors, template, uh, type name F uh, Type name and that, that a for arguments, you know before we had the restriction of the only thing only a function You could pass is a void function takes no parameters returns no value But now we're allowing you to pass anything you want uh, Args, Yeah, we want our universal references as always well the first thing we have to do is create a task based on you know the function and the arguments and we'll just do like we did before with the structured binding. We get a task, we get our future. All right, now that we have that, we've got to insert that into the queue. So we lock the mutex and we push the task into the queue. Uh, then we notify the task queue that there's something in there and you better get to work. And the last thing we do is we return the task, right? So now, our thread pool, it doesn't return void when we run, it returns a future. Did I say task? Oops, future, there we go. Yeah, so we return the future, so now when you run a task on the thread pool, you get a little ticket back, and you can use that to get the result when it becomes available. So we'll just do, I will just do auto here because I'm lazy. And uh, that's that. All the angry red dots have been removed from our scroll bar, and we are now free to build. And it will, of course, build without any errors. Oh, wait a minute, there's errors. Oh boy. Okay. Promise void set no matching overloaded function found. Uh, with r equals to void. Okay, so here is the problem. We're trying to use a void function, void lambda. Lambda that returns nothing with our pool here. And that is trying to create a promise of type T void. And then when we call set, it's expecting a value here, result, but it's getting no values because there are no values, right? It's void. We have nothing to pass to the set function. So that's a problem, right? Void is kind of like a special case. Well, in the case here, this is a templated function. What if we replace this, um, universal reference with a universal parameter pack reference thingy. Uh, because if this is if this is the syntax, then we are allowed to pass in zero things, right? We can forward zero things to this set function. So if we do this, okay, it still doesn't work. Hmm. All right, so the problem is if we pass in a void to the function like this, it just doesn't like it. I don't know. It's kind of, it just doesn't like it. So what we could do, if const expr, so we're gonna check, uh, so we, we get the invoke result of f. What does f return? What's the dog doing? And if the dog is returning void, we say, okay, so you're returning void. So then we're gonna call this function, and then we're gonna call promise set with nothing. Because apparently it just doesn't like this, even if it's a parameter pack. It just don't like it. And so that's fair enough, you know. You do use C++. Um, and if it is not void, then we can just do this thing here. So, how do you like me now, C++? How do you like me now? Not very much, apparently. Okay. Ah! But now, parameter pack must be expanded in this context. Okay. All right. You know what? You, oh, wait a minute. All I needed to do was do this maybe, build. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're smart, C++. What? I hate you, C++, you're dumb. Value, is void is not valid. Void is not valid. Okay, we got, we're getting a lot of template stuff here. Let's go to, wait a minute. Static assert failed T in optional T must meet the, 
See, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I know where I'm using an optional. We got, we got this, guys. I'm using an optional here in shared state. An optional void don't make a lot of sense. We should specialize shared state. Let's see if I remember how to specialize templates, because I don't do it that often. Template. You know, I'm not, I'm not a template meta programmer by trade. I dabble. I'm a dabbler. Uh, shared state of void. Like this? Is this good? Okay. So we're going to do like a special case for shared state when your boy is void. And what they, what we're going to say here is, well, obviously set. When your, boy, when your boy is void, set takes no parameters. And get doesn't return anything. Right? Why should it? There's nothing to return. All right, so we're, we're getting there. Result. All right, so we have an optional T, but there's no T, so there's no reason to optional. So what we should do instead is we should just have like a bool. We'll call it something like complete. And initially that is flas, flaccid. Okay, so set. So if not complete, then we just release the ready signal. We don't set a result because there is no result to set, right? Uh, so if we're not complete, then we'll do complete underscore equal to true, and then set the ready signal. And if we want to get, uh, we just acquire the ready signal, right? There's no value to return. We just require acquire, and that's the synchronization. This is what the, the future does to wait. All right, so that seems good. That seems good, right? Now, if we have the shared state specialization, does that make everyone happy? It does. Okay, well, I mean, I'm surprised as you, but um, it, it makes sense, I guess, if you don't think about it too much. We needed uh, we needed a specialization of shared state. It just didn't, it didn't like the optional void. It just didn't like it. And I don't like it either, so, you know, we're on the same page there. All right, I don't know about you, but I want to be here for 160 of those, so let's change that to, like, 40, and let's run it. Let's see if it just, like, crashes and burns. And it's not crashing, and it's not burning. It just works. So there you go. We have solved it. We can now run our new style tasks on our thread pool and it's very clean. And I mean, the, the interface hasn't changed pretty much at all, um, but we've got new abilities, right? We have the ability to pass parameters to these functions and we have the ability to get results out of them in a functional notation with futures. So, I mean, let's do it. Let's do some of that stuff. So instead of making this function take in no parameters, let's make it take in some parameters. Let's go int milliseconds. So this is going to be the number of milliseconds that it sleeps for. So we'll just do uh, one millisecond times milliseconds. There you go. And it's going to have to output something. Let's make it output a string. So instead of directly writing to C out, what we're going to do is we are going to return ss.string. All right, so now when we run this, nothing's going to happen, but there will be some futures coming out of here. So we should probably store those futures somewhere. So give me a vector of future strings and um, let's just put those in here. Futures dot pushback run this guy. And we're not going to wait for all done here. But what we are going to do is once we have, you know, basically submitted all our tasks to our thread pool. We are now going to go through and uh, we, we, we sow, now we reap. So auto and F in futures. And we do like this. Now, last thing here, uh, our thing takes in parameter milliseconds, but we're not passing that in. So let's just say milliseconds is equal to I, no, I times 25. And let's go. So what we should expect to see is the tasks, they run very fast and then they slow down. You can see they're slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, and done. Now we're doing the other stuff at the bottom. And there you go. Beautiful. Parameterized task submission, store the futures, and then we reap what we sow. You got to admit, this is very nice syntax here. We just give a function and we give the parameters. We can just use any normal function, just any function you find in your pocket. You can use it now. It doesn't have to have any awareness of promise or future or any of that garbage. 
Uh, and we run it. We get those futures back, and then we can use those futures whenever we feel like it. Whenever the fancy strikes you. Now, this is very sexy. This is very cool. Let's uh, let's take the sexy and let's turn them up by one. We're gonna we're gonna take the sexy up to eleven. So, how do you take sexy up to eleven? Of course, first step is include ranges. So now we are going to because our stuff is more functionally based, uh, ranges is gonna work very nice for us here. Put in my favorite little shortcuts in here and make things a little more sexy. So let's make our futures. Auto futures is equal to. So we start with a range of values that go from 0 to 39, which means 0 to 40. You know the, you know the uh, inclusive exclusive deal. And what are we going to do with those? We're going to transform those into futures. So let's just capture the stuff we have. And we're going to take in int i, which is our range of values from 0 to 40. And we're going to return pool.run spit i times 25. So there you go. We've transformed this range of values, integers, into a range of futures. And last thing we're going to do is we want to turn that into a vector. We want to store it. And we want to make sure that this actually gets executed because, you know, views are lazy. So this will make sure that the view is the whole range is run over and executed and submitted to our thread pool. And now we have this vector of futures. And this part here is pretty much exactly the same as we had before. But yeah, we can use ranges. It's another way of expressing how we build up our tasks. And I like it. I like this too. It works just as well. Here we see it doing its thing. So there you go. We can now execute arbitrary functions on a thread pool, get a future, get the result at some time later. And it's good times. All the details of, you know, having a task, breaking off the, the promise in the future, injecting that, setting the promise, those are all handled for us. We don't have to worry about that dumb stuff. We can focus on actual code that does the things we want to do. Now let me ask you one question here. A little, little uh, riddle me this. What happens if our function here, something in here, throws an exception? What happens? What do you think happens? Think about that one. We'll, we'll, we'll have a think about that when I come back with the next video and maybe we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do about that little uh, issue. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. Helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more C++ multi-threading.